Various efforts are underway to boost Africa's economies and capitalize on the continent's abundant natural resources. Among those efforts are Spatial Development Initiatives, or SDIs. We spoke recently with Rosalind Thomas, a development expert, who says that SDIs are working well and that some African countries are making progress in attracting foreign investment. Africa has always been a exporter of primary commodities. This strategy looks at how do we now value add and ensure greater um, returns to the countries concerned for those natural resources. Using the Maputo Development Corridor, explain how the SDI work. It's about space, the use of space and clustering of, of, of uh, uh, industry or services around a particular natural resource exploitation, usually minerals. Now, if we look at the Maputo Development Corridor, that wasn't necessarily a minerals exploitation, but what was interesting about it was the access to international markets. Um, Maputo itself is the shortest route for Johannesburg, the Gauteng region of South Africa, uh, which is the industrial heartland to take the, its goods, the goods from, from South Africa through to the port and to the rest of the world. What do you see as the potential growth to other parts? of the continent. The NEPAD, in, I think a couple of years ago, uh, commissioned a study which looked at um, opening up the strategy to the rest of Africa and they've identified 12 other corridors around the coast of, of Africa, including North Africa. And they also follow the transport or trade corridors, but looking at also the Africa's comparative advantage in not only in minerals exploitation, but agricultural exploitation and tourism, fisheries, uh, forestry, uh, all the natural resources that Africa uh, has uh, in abundance um, to see how to utilize exploitation of those natural resources to help pay for infrastructure through public-private partnerships. How do you see this changing the face of developmental growth in Africa? In 1992, when, when Mozambique, when the war came to an end, Mozambique had minus 8% uh, GDP growth. Maputo Corridor helped to facilitate growth to, and it was, it was maintaining double digit growth about 10 or 11 percent per annum. I think today they are probably about 8 percent, although the financial crisis may obviously uh, impact on that growth. Um, so we think, uh, you know, that the, uh, when we look at the whole the strategy and its potential for Africa, it's a private sector led growth strategy. So the idea is to, to accelerate investment into the private sector and to attract the foreign in private and low pri private into those areas of growth. By Africa becoming more investment friendly, does it stand to be the winner in terms of dictating how certain investments are carried out? As compared to global uh, GDP growth, uh, the African continent has been outperforming the rest of the world on, on growth for several years. They had projected that it would uh, grow for 2009 by 6.4% and that's been now, as a result of the, of the financial crisis, downplayed now to about 4.5% growth, which is still pretty high, when the rest of the world is seen to be only growing at 1% GDP. With the exception of China. Except, Except for China, China and India. I'm glad you've raised that because they are important players in the African context because they, these are economies that are still growing they're going to need natural resources and Africa provides them with those opportunities. Now how we make sure that Africa's interests are also protected in a relationship with the Chinese interest in our, our natural resources or Indian interest in our natural resources is obviously a critical relationship uh, that needs to be balanced out properly for, in our, our favour as Africans.